Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have another best and worst new beauty launches for you. You guys seem to love watching these and I love filming these so I'm back with another one. Today's one is going to be slightly different because there haven't really been too many products this month that I'm like, no, no, no. There have been a couple but basically I'm splitting this in to launches that I love, launches that I like but there's a few things that I'm like, mm, this could be better. Um, and then launches that I'm like, mm, no. So that is the gist with today's video, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that I'm getting started with are the Huda Beauty Liquid Matte Lipsticks, and they have just launched in the UK. So for those of you across the world who have been able to get hold of them for like the past month, uh, we've only just got these. So I'm very excited about this because as you guys will probably know, I'm obsessed with Huda. I love her, I love everything about her, I'm just kind of really obsessed with her. But anyway, we're here to talk about the liquid lipsticks and I've been really enjoying wearing these over the past couple of weeks. They are very soft on the lips, they don't feel too matte at all, they don't feel... A lot of the time when I wear a liquid lipstick it is very stiff and I can feel that it's dried to my lips and it feels very matte. Um, they're often quite thick so you can just feel that everything is quite dry and something has set onto your lips but with these they just feel very not nourishing but they feel very very comfortable to wear like I feel like I'm just wearing a normal lipstick but there is I just feel like I'm not even wearing anything if I'm honest like that is how comfortable these are for me to wear and because they are a bit softer in texture I do find that they wear a little bit quicker around the center of the lips in comparison to other liquid lipsticks but for me personally I am happy to deal with that because the formula is just so comfortable and they build really well as well you don't get any build up that's uncomfortable or makes like your lips peel or anything um, and because of that they are really easy to reapply so the shades that I have are bombshell uh trendsetter i have venus somewhere somewhere i'm not sure where oh there it is Duh. and then vixen and icon the one thing about these that i would say that i have to overlook because i love these so much but it's the one thing that really gets me is the smell they smell like malibu rum um oh it makes me feel a bit queasy. So if you like that kind of coconutty, vanilla-y sweet smell, then these will be great and you'll love the smell of them. But if you've had some bad experiences with Malibu like I have, it may make your stomach churn. Luckily the smell does go away after a while so I can deal with these, but I thought that I would mention that as I know that for a lot of people that can be a total deal breaker. But other than that, I've been so happy that these have finally launched in the UK and I've been loving wearing them so. Yeah. Now I have a couple of launches from Hourglass and if you are a fan of reading what's on my face in the info box then you will have seen uh, the product names for these listed quite a few times recently because I've just been loving wearing these. So the first launch is the new Hourglass Stick Foundation. I'm not sure if that's its official name, it probably has something a lot classier than Stick Foundation. This has just been my go-to foundation recently. I feel like stick foundations are having a bit of a revolution recently. I don't normally love them at all but since the Clinique one came out earlier in the spring I really really loved that one and this I would say is it's more high coverage sister. This one is more of a medium to potentially build up to heavy coverage foundation. It's so easy to apply. I just bop a bit on each cheek and then a little bit on my forehead and blend it in with my Real Techniques uh, blending sponge and I'm done. And it's just the easiest base. It feels lovely. It's not drying. I always sometimes find that um, stick foundations are known for being very heavy and quite drying and a bit cakey and this is none of those things at all. It's really glowing, it's really nourishing on the skin. It's also really lovely if you're wearing a lightweight kind of BB cream or foundation or whatever all over your face and you want to build up the coverage in certain areas, this is perfect for that. So I'd highly recommend looking into this if you're looking for a really easy to apply, no fuss but really beautiful foundation. Then we have the Hourglass Illume Sheer Trio which is a cream bronzer, highlighter and blush set. I didn't get this bang on when it launched. I think this has been out for a while but it is one of those newer releases that I had to tell you guys about because I'm absolutely loving it. The creams are really beautiful, they blend so seamlessly on the skin. They're fairly long lasting for creams as well, like they're actually holding up in this heat which I'm really impressed with. I feel like this month has been the best month for testing out whether makeup stands up to the heat and these ones for me are just brilliant. The highlighter I don't use so much but it is 
gorgeous. I've not really been into highlighter so much the past couple of weeks. I don't really need it because I'm sweating so much, but it's really beautiful. It has no shimmer chunks or glitter chunks to it. It just gives a beautiful sheen to your face. Actually, I want to put a bit on my nose because I forgot to highlight my nose. I love the mirror on this as well. The blush shade for me as well is like my perfect blush shade and the more contoury bronzy shade as well is really perfect for where my skin is at right now. I'm not super, super tanned and it's just perfect. I do think this obviously works a lot better if you are on the fairer side of things. I think if you're darker, some of the parts of this it will not work. So I've been loving these two. I would highly recommend checking them out. Out of everything I speak about in the love section of this video, I'd say that the two Hourglass products are the ones that I think are worth the purchase. So I would definitely look into those two. Next, we have a product that's filling the gap between the loves and the likes. And this has been a mascara that I have worn pretty much every day since I got it. Tarte sent it to me and it's their Man Eater Mascara. And at first I was like, oh, it's a plastic brush with tiny bristles. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this. I love this. It's everything I could have wanted in a mascara ever. And it just gives length, volume, separation, definition, everything it is insane. However, it's not really standing up to the heat at the moment. And I'm quite frequently ended up with um, loads and loads of mascara on my upper, brow bone? My brow bone? Brow bone. And I think that's one of those problems that only people with super long lashes have and it's like, oh poor you, you have really long lashes, you know. But it is one of those issues that I find really really annoying and if you have long lower lashes or just any areas where your lashes touch your skin at any point, this is going to be a bit of a nightmare if you live in a very hot country because it basically is just smudging everywhere. It kind of is at the point where I think if it gets any hotter it might just melt off my face. But when it wasn't so hot and it was a lot cooler, I found that this was my perfect mascara. So if you are living in a hotter climate, I would definitely not recommend this because I think it will just melt off your eyes. But if you live in slightly cooler climates, then I think that this is a great mascara to check out. And so many people that I've spoken to have been loving this as well. So I think it is a good all rounder and it's just a great new launch. I was obsessed with it up until the point where it started smudging like a bit. And then what else do we have? Oh, there are some new launches from Bare Minerals. Oh, that was loud. These are the Bare Minerals Bare Pro uh, Powder Foundation. I think that's what this is called. I'm always so terrible at remembering the names of things. It says Performance Wear Powder Foundation. So here I have the shades Sandstone and Golden Nude, and I'm wearing Sandstone on my skin today. I basically popped this on this morning in the areas that I needed a little bit more coverage, and I just wanted things to look a little bit more matte as well, but it also helped to set everything. So you can use this on its own, onto your normal skin or you can use it over any other foundation and this seems to build very well. I've been playing about with this a lot. It seems to build up really nicely. It can go a bit too matte at first but I always find that because my skin is so oily my natural oils do come through but I've been really impressed with the coverage of this. It kind of mimics the same look as the MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation which is my all-time favourite powder foundation, I just absolutely love that stuff. It makes my skin look so smooth and so flawless. That one can go a bit powdery and I haven't managed to get to that stage with this yet though, so this might be a winner for me, you never know. Uh, but yeah, this is another new launch that I've been, really been liking. I haven't had the chance to try it out for too long though, so I don't want to put this in the love category, but I do think it's very, very good. Next we have some new things from MAC. They have just released their new collection, which they've released two. One is Star Trek and one is like Super Bowl themed, so like baseball theme, I think. And I've actually really liked this one. The Star Trek one, I was like, mm, no. However, the colors in the Super Bowl collection, I can totally get on with. So one of the products is this uh, lip gloss, lip glossy type product in a very dark, pinky, purpley color. And I think that that is perfect for autumn. And then the other lip product is this lipstick, which is also perfect for autumn. You can tell why I like this collection now. And this is called Bowl Me Over. And oh my God, this is just gorgeous. It's like a brownie, purpley, slightly reddy color. I'm just like, mm. I just feel like this is so Halloween and so autumn appropriate. So I've been loving that. The one part that I wasn't too keen on is the Bolarama eyeshadow, which is basically a fluorescent limey green, very similar to one of the MAC Trolls um, eyeshadows. And I'm not really into green eyeshadow, so I give that one a miss, but the majority of the Super Bowl collection that I've seen, I'm like, yeah, okay, I can get on board with that, which is a nice change from last month's best and worst video where I was like, MAC Trolls, no, no, 
No. And then I have a new launch from Illamasqua and I'm going to put the info for this in the info box. Uh, but this is one of their new kind of pressed pigment shadows. This is beautiful. I'm wearing this on my eyes today. It is so gorgeous. It's like a beautiful, cool toned, pinky, metallic shade. It's just absolutely, oh my god, it's absolutely stunning. I find that this works really well applied dry with a flat brush, but also really well applied wet. The one reason this isn't a product that I'm totally obsessed with is because it does tend to move about a bit. So I found that today with my eyeliner, it started to migrate down and sit on top of my eyeliner and it was not a good look. So I powdered over the top and fingers crossed, I can't see it moving down. And then we are moving on to the products that I didn't like so much. So just a disclaimer on this part before we get started, these products aren't necessarily terrible products. They're just ones that really didn't work for me for whatever reason, whether it's skin tone, personal preference. So if you like these, please don't be offended. And hopefully if you find my recommendations useful or if you find you have a similar skin type or preferences when it comes to scents or anything like that, hopefully you will find this useful. So first up, we have some new products from Zoeva and most of you guys will know I am a massive fan of Zoeva products. I pretty much love everything that they put out, but unfortunately these two were just not for me. So the first one is a concealer palette, and I feel like if you are fair, this will work so much better on you than it did for me, but there just isn't a good shade range in this, and I found that everything was just way too light for me. The only two shades that will really work on me are these two here, and they're obviously to correct, so I would then have to put my own concealer over the top. This one is just slightly too warm and dark and also I do find that this would work much better on oily skins because I found just applying these on the back of my hand they felt very thick and just a bit chalky so I don't think that these are the best concealers out there so I was just a little bit underwhelmed by this one I'm not really too keen on it but let me know if any of you have been using this and how you found this to work out for you and then they also have released a contour palette which I think is much better than the concealer palette but again it's just I don't really love it. This palette has a yellow banana powder, a highlight, and then two contour shades. One is more ashy toned and one is more warm toned. This is just one of those products where I think it's okay, but it's just not the best in the world. It comes with a highlight, which I don't like the highlight in this at all. It's very glittery, very shimmery. It looks white, but then it blends out to a more yellow tone, and I just find it looks so unflattering on my skin. I really don't like it. The banana powder is okay, um, I don't find that it does too much for my skin really and the contour shades I think are quite good So you have one more slightly cool toned one and then one warmer one and they blend out fairly nicely So I'm 50 50 on this one, which is why it didn't make it into the kind of likes pile I'm just not too keen and then finally we have the Tom Ford Orchid Soleil and this is basically Tom Ford's velvet orchid but mixed with coconut that is the only way I can describe this. It smells like if I mixed Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess and Velvet Orchid in a bottle together. And I love the two of those separately, but not together. This one is just one that is not up my street. I love very sweet, dark scents, but this one for me, I'm just like, it's a real shame because the packaging is absolutely stunning. Like it is so gorgeous. And if you like more coconutty scents and you like something that's very strong, and maybe a coconut scent that's got something very dark to it. I think maybe you will love this. I found that this one was not for me, unfortunately, which is such a shame because it's such a gorgeous bottle. But yeah, unfortunately, I'm just not gonna get on with this one, so I will be rehoming this. And finally, I have a few new launches that I haven't had the chance to give it a proper road test yet, but as this is a new beauty launches, I wanted to show them to you guys because I think it's gonna be another month until the next one of these, so I didn't wanna leave you guys hanging and then these be like a couple of months old. The first one is Clinique's new Pep Start Moisturizer. It feels really lovely and hydrating and cooling on the skin. I'm gonna give this a full road test for a couple of months and keep you guys updated. And then we have Dior's new Dream Skin Perfect skin cushion foundation so excited when they sent this over i was just like oh my gosh i love cushion foundations and i love dior products so far this looks beautiful it's really smoothing and just a lovely texture the one thing i would say is that it is quite fragranced so if your skin tends to react quite badly to fragrance this might be one to maybe stick clear of and then finally we have urban decay's moon dust palette which i am so in love with and i cannot wait to use it in a video they are just the most beautiful glittery shimmery shades the pigment of these is just crazy i'm gonna show you the pink one now i love this pink shade i think it's beautiful it's lovely like 
fuchsia orangey duochrome color. I just think that these are incredible and I haven't really seen anything else like this. Also, whilst I'm talking about Urban Decay, I actually have one of their, I think, slightly newer palettes that I'm going to be giving away. So this is the Urban Decay Vice Reloaded palette. I will put all of the information in the info box as to how you can win this. But I just thought I would do a little Urban Decay giveaway in this video to say thank you for all of the love on the best and worst launches videos because I am so happy that you guys have been loving them. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that giveaway. Do make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you would like to see more giveaways. And also I think midnight tonight, so if you're watching this on Sunday as it goes up. Midnight tonight my Charlotte Tilbury lipstick giveaway will be closing so you do still have time to enter if you haven't already and yeah that is it from me today. I really hope you guys are all having the best day and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Ready? Okay! Expectations. Reality. Expectations. Reality. How do I do this thing again? <laughs> to do. It sounds like it's gonna explode. Hair is so flat today because it is so hot.